Recently, I was asked by Filaments Depot if I wanted to test out their new line of PLA filament. And in our back and forth discussion, it came up that their filament is made from food safe raw materials. And that's not to be confused with filament that is actually rated food safe. And previously, I had never really thought about that too much or made that particular distinction uh, because I've never had any projects to date that I've had to produce a food safe end product. Now the guys at Filaments Depot explained to me that to get a food safe filament, what would have to take place is that both the raw materials, so let's say the resin and the colorant and whatever else goes into that mix, plus the manufacturing process of the filament uh, would have to be food safe compliant. And then the filament would be potentially rated food safe. And even then, what ends up happening is your end product may still not be actually food safe, uh, because it depends on how you end up handling and processing that particular filament, which will ultimately dictate whether or not the end product is truly food safe. And so I suspect in some cases, there are some brands from a particular country with a very poor record of consumer product safety uh, that are claiming to be fully food grade safe filaments when truly at best, they are likely made from just food grade raw materials. Now, I was very happy to see that Filaments Depot was very transparent about what they produce, where they produce it, uh, and they were able to explain that difference and distinction to me so that I could bring it up with you guys in this video and just make you more aware of the topic. And perhaps this is something just like me that you've never really considered before. And let me know down in the comments section if this is something that you already knew about uh, or this is news to you. And so as my channel continues to grow and gain more subscribers, I get more offers from companies wanting me to test their products. I like to be selective about the products that I recommend to you, and so I was happy to test out a few rolls of the Filaments Depot PLA because of their honesty on the food safe filament subject. They produce their filament in Canada, package it in a recyclable spool and box, and include an extra resealable bag. They guarantee their product quality and maintain that quality with the state-of-the-art extrusion equipment and a live multi-axis micrometer for diameter monitoring. They also publish the mechanical properties of their filament, which is nice to know if you plan on using it for a more technical application. Currently, they have red, blue, black, and white available, but I was told more colors are on their way and the price is very reasonable. I'll put some links down in the video description where you can find their product. And so with all of that said, how does it print? Well, it's PLA, so thankfully it prints as easy as you would expect, from a high quality PLA product. I had to change absolutely nothing from my standard PLA profile and the parts came out looking great. In a previous video, I upgraded my Ender 3 Max with a new hot end and extruder combination. So I'll link to that video in the top right hand corner of the screen, but I was experimenting with a larger 0.6 millimeter nozzle and I was printing with larger layer heights and line widths. Felon's Depot PLA had no problem flowing nicely at those higher volumetric flow rates and the only issue that I ran into was what looked like a little bit of over extrusion on some of my top layers. I measured the filament diameter and it was extremely consistent coming in at exactly 1.75 millimeters, so it did not appear to be an issue with the filament itself. I just think my profile for the larger nozzle needed a little more tweaking. Now I own multiple printers, so prints that came off of various other machines that I own uh, with the more common 0.4 millimeter nozzles were beautiful and extremely consistent. I attempted to break a few of these parts by hand and separate the layers. On thin walled parts, this was definitely possible as it would have been with any other PLA on the market, but I reprinted a few of them at slightly higher print temperatures, for example, 215 degrees Celsius, and found a noticeable improvement in layer adhesion, pretty much as you would expect from most filaments when you're printing at higher temperatures. Therefore, if you need a little bit of extra strength, consider bumping up your nozzle temperature slightly. I ended up going through one complete roll of each color to make sure that I didn't run into any issues before making this video and recommending this product to you guys. And so we can take a quick look at a few of the other parts that I produced in the various colors. These are what I like to call caster cups and they go under the caster wheels of your gaming chair or office chair and they prevent it from moving around while you're doing things like gaming or sim racing. So if you have sim racing pedals and you're pushing on those pedals, it'll prevent your chair from rolling away. I sell these on Etsy and these prints came out exceptionally clean as well as strong so they had no problem supporting my weight under my office chair. This here is an alignment tool that I designed for a laser cutting machine, the Two Trees TTS 55, and it's another 
item that I sell on my website and I've also made the download files available on printables. Uh, but this print came out exceptionally nice with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle and I find that white filaments are sometimes very difficult to print in and that's because it makes all the imperfections very visible. But in this case, the parts turned out absolutely flawless. In this next part, I used both the red and black PLA to produce one of these snap latch cases. And you can see in the area there with my logo on it, uh, there was some bridging that didn't come out particularly great. This was printed with a 0.6 millimeter nozzle and I don't think I had my cooling settings right for bridging. Um, so I'm still working on that 0.6 millimeter nozzle profile, but otherwise all the walls came out super clean and with the 0.6 millimeter nozzle, I was able to save a lot of time uh, when printing this entire assembly. If you're looking for a very vibrant shade of red, then I would consider this brand. And if you're looking for something deeper, then definitely look elsewhere. Lastly on this part, take note of the steep overhangs. Again, I was using a 0.6 millimeter nozzle with 0.4 millimeter layer heights. And so those steep overhangs are pretty challenging to produce. And I was still dialing in the part cooling settings for the 0.6 millimeter nozzle. I also printed these master spool parts that I designed and these are meant for refillable rolls of filament and you can find those design files on my printables page i'll put a link in the video description down below in addition to that in the filaments depot blue i also printed some of these stanley vacuum adapters i featured these parts in a previous video where i showed how to turn your shop vacuum into a fume filtration system for things like hobby grade laser cutters and as you can see, the Filaments Depot Blue PLA is also quite vibrant, and I think it's a really nice shade of blue. All of these parts were printed with a 0.6 millimeter nozzle at 0.4 millimeter layer heights. Therefore, you'll notice that the features of the part that have steep transition angles are looking pretty chunky, and that's obviously a function of those taller layer heights. I thoroughly enjoyed my time spent printing with all four rolls of the filament that they sent me, and any of these parts that had articulated joints like this Flexi Rex came out just fine. The tight diameter control on the filament ensured that I had good dimensional accuracy in my prints and none of those articulated joints ended up bonding together. And on these snap latch cases that I showed you guys earlier, all of the functional hinges and latches that experienced some sort of mechanical stress are still operating perfectly fine to this day after many cycles of being open and shut. Now, normally for those functional hinges and latches, I would say that it would be better to use PETG, but in this particular case, obviously I just wanted to test out this particular brand of filament in that application. Let me know what you guys think of these sample parts that I printed down in the comments section below. That's it for this video. Big shout out to Filaments Depot for providing me with their material to test. And again, I just want to acknowledge their integrity when it comes to their product description and educating me on that distinction between filaments that are simply made with food grade safe raw materials and then filaments that are truly rated food safe. So go check them out. I'll put links in the video description where you can find them and where you can find their products. Please also consider visiting my website, embracemaking.com, where you'll find exclusive 3D printer upgrades that I've personally designed for a variety of machines. And that application list is constantly growing. And by supporting me on my website, you're supporting this channel and the content that I bring to you guys. Thanks for watching.